What's up guys, welcome to Wrench Capital Charts. Today we're taking a look at NVIDIA, ticker symbol NVDA, on a variety of time frames in anticipation of tomorrow's trading day, Monday, January 29th. Well, NVIDIA on Friday, down nearly 1%, minus 0.95% here, getting some decent consolidation after, of course, the low volume after hours. We're going to take a look at this on a variety of time frames, try to get some context here, and then lay out the bullish and bearish cases come tomorrow, Monday. This, of course, being the one-minute chart. Let's zoom out here to the five-minute chart and get a little better view. And you can see all the way over to the left here, you got that early, early morning pre-market test Friday morning of almost $600 a share, bouncing off of 601.89, really that 602 region. Other than that, as far as EMAs are concerned, intraday opportunities here from Friday, not a lot to gain from the five minutes. So let's move on here to the kind of the start of what I like to call the day-to-day -day charts, the 30 minute. And then you have, of course, the four hour and the, the daily chart, which we'll get to. Now, look, the one thing on the 30 minute that really stands out to me, see this 50 period, this white line, you can see here that back on Thursday, we gave that up when it was previously acting as a support level back on Wednesday morning. Okay, we gave that up, retested it, formed it as a resistance, faded off of that, retested it on Friday. It was sloppy, but we faded off of that, retested again, faded off into the close there on Friday. So heading into Monday, looking at this 30 minute chart in particular, remember, you know, we're always looking at multiple time frames. I don't like to ever say, well, I'm just going to trade off the 15 minute. I'm just going to trade off the 30 minute. I'm always looking if I'm looking at especially like multi-day trades or even longer intraday trades, like not necessarily a scout mentality, right? But longer intraday all the way up to longer term, multi-week, even multi-month swing trades. I always want to be looking at at least the 30 minute, the four hour and the daily because we're always looking for as many things, as many factors lining up in our favor to potentially support our bias and the things that go against our bias to help us understand the psychology of the other side, as many of those as possible. And it's important to gain the context by looking at multiple charts. So here on the 30 minute on NVIDIA tomorrow, Monday, that 50 period, we've seen it now act as a resistance level three or four times just in the last, you know, you have, you have six and a half hours of trading here, you have maybe an hour of trading here, just in the last like eight hours of trading, we've seen that test it and reject you could almost argue five times okay so that's an incredibly relevant level here on the 30 minute remember context apply that to the 30 minute chart also taking into consideration the things that we're going to discuss here on the four hour and the daily and before we move on just to make sure you know we're all on the same page here you see that 50 period right acting as a potential resistance i'm also going to be paying attention on the 30 minute to that 200 period which could act as a potential support, though we don't have a ton of recent evidence to back that up. But just psychologically, it's recently gotten over 600 bucks a share. Going to be paying attention to that. Let's look now here at the four hour chart. Zoom in just slightly. We can see this recent pump that this stock has been on. You know, going back to just the start of 2023, we were down around well, well under 500 bucks a share. Or I apologize, the start of 2024. Of course, we're looking at the four hour. Just in the last month or so, less than that, four weeks approximately, the stock is up. I mean, if we look here, this name is up nearly 30%, 28%, 27.5%. So look here, something that really becomes obvious on the four hour, you know, 600 bucks, of course, it started as a psychological level, you know, here near what, what is, of course, the all-time high. But as you'll, you'll see, the more and more time you spend looking at and studying charts, you'll start to notice that psychological levels more often than not turn into incredibly relevant technical levels. And then once that occurs, once you get the first couple of tests from both sides of the ball, so to speak, on an expected psychological level, it tends to turn into that technical level as well. And then you have multiple reasonings for looking at that level, psychological and technical, which increases the likelihood of it acting as a self-fulfilling prophecy, which is the whole point of all of these levels. So in addition here on the four hour, you know, 600 of course is relevant across all time frames. but in addition to that here on the four hour in particular, I am watching the 50 period moving average, which is that white line currently right around 586. Um, that will come into play 
as well as this all-time high here when we're discussing bullish versus bearish potential scenarios, which of course we're going to get here to now, or now, on the daily chart. So looking here on the daily chart, first of all, don't let these circles here distract you. That's from when we were looking at 500 as a very obvious psychological level, which ended up breaking upside, which you know inevitably is what helped lead to this recent run, something we had discussed at the time. But looking here toward tomorrow, let's start with the bears here, okay? Let's give them their, their day. If you're bearish on NVIDIA, your position short, you own puts, you have bearish spreads on anything, here, I really think you have like one thing on your mind right now. You are looking at $600 a share, right? And you, you know, currently that's about a percent and a half, a little bit more away. That's well within a one day trading range of NVIDIA. It's a more volatile name, of course. You want a downside break of six, ideally a downside break, a retest, reclaim that level as resistance, and then fade off of that as resistance. As a bear, that would be. You know, that would be highly encouraging to bears, highly discouraging to quite a few bulls, which as a bear you would obviously appreciate. Now, if you're bullish here on NVIDIA, there are two things on your mind. $600 a share, if we see a retest, which listen, would not be out of the ordinary or unexpected at all. So if we end up seeing that, don't allow that to get under your skin. But if we do see a test of 600 here in the near future, we're going to want to see from a bullish perspective a really, really strong hold. I don't mind if it tests it four times in a row, okay? Just hold that level 600 as support. Now, I don't mean if it gets down to 599.80, it's broken. I don't really consider things broken, you know, to the downside or to the upside for, for that matter, until we see a break, a retest, and a fade, or, you know, a break, a retest, and a bounce in a bullish case over the course of a few trading days. Okay, intraday, like a sloppy break, it hits 599.80, 599.50, you know, whatever. You need to zoom out a little bit more. We're not talking to the penny. We're talking from a macro view. Just hold 600 bucks a share. Do not give it up in an obvious manner, psychologically speaking, to all the other market participants, right, where they would also consider it broken. And then ideally hold it, bounce up out of that hole, and then that next level, obviously, becomes kind of like that 630 range. We're looking at an all-time high at a round number region, okay? A break, a hold here, a bounce, and then a break upside of 630, retest and bounce. That would be, for me, where I would start to consider that all-time high broken and, and held, at least in the short term. Now, let's take a look at what the options traders are thinking heading into Monday. This is the options data, of course, all the volume from Friday. This gives us a lot of insight, and I think a lot of people overlook some really good, valuable information that's offered in here, okay? 1.62 million total contracts, good sample size, quality data with a big sample size, 902,000 calls approximately, 723,000 puts, leaning slightly overall call put ratio to the bullish side. Now, that's speculative money, the short-term money. We can get some bias from there as well if we simply look at the call volume compared to the put volume in the 0 to 20 delta range. That's the short-dated, gambly-style speculative contracts, and we can see what the option traders are thinking here on a big sample size in the very short term. You can see here, 331,000 calls in that 0 to 20 delta range, 355,000 puts, pretty evenly matched here. Slightly weighted to the bearish side in the very short term, but again, that's that's not overwhelming at all. 355 to 330, that's pretty evenly matched, but overall call per ratio, slightly weighted to the bullish side. If you got value out of this video, please subscribe to our brand new channel here, Wrench Capital Charts. I appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one.